How's it going, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Blast from the Past, episode number two on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, the show where myself, Kyle Masters, goes through and into the past of the WWE and give you a pay-per-view by pay-per-view reaction and review. You can check out the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. We're also be able to follow on Instagram and Facebook. You can also check out our weekly show where we react and discuss Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night SmackDown. And that is the Lowdown Show, recorded live on Spreaker at Spreaker.com slash NHBWP every Wednesday or Thursday night. We are also available on YouTube, so go give us a subscribe at YouTube.com slash NHBWR. You can also find some other content on there, some unboxings. We have lots of content on our YouTube channel, so go check that out. As you heard, I am your host, the self-proclaimed greatest host of Blast from the Past, and we have reached No Way Out 2000. So this is episode two. Go back and check out episode one where I react and review uh, the Royal Rumble 2000. Um, great, pay- great pay-per-view that was, and a great Royal Rumble with a uh, nice finish. So we're now at No Way Out on January 27th, 2000. The current WWF champion is still Triple H. The WWF Intercontinental Champion is Chris Jericho, as we saw how he won it at Royal Rumble 2000. Also, the WWF Tag Team Champions are still the New Age Outlaws in Road Dog and Billy Gunn. Now, No Way Out 2000 was an interesting pay-per-view. It had uh, one of the best Hell in a Cell matches uh, in history in the WWE and the main event of this pay-per-view. We also had some... Uh, some pretty good feuds going into this one. And there's a specific match that I'll, I'll talk about later on that I actually loved and suggest you guys go back and watch it because it's a great wrestling match, lots of spots. And if you're into that stuff, I suggest you go back and watch it. And it's with uh, two teams, and one of the teams is actually on the current roster. So I'll get into that when we get to it. Um, but yeah, we're uh, basically in the, the go-home pay-per-view for WrestleMania 2000. And that was an interesting WrestleMania as well, as it was labeled WrestleMania 2000, and it wasn't the number uh, the, of the WrestleMania it was. Uh, as, you, as you've seen beforehand, it was uh, 14, 15, and then it did, this, this is actually 16, but they named it WrestleMania 2000. Um, and I think that's the only WrestleMania they've done that so far, so uh, it's pretty interesting. So we'll get into that when we get to that in the next episode. But for now, No Way Out 2000, guys. And we'll start with the opening contest. And we got Kurt Angle and Chris Jericho for the WWF Intercontinental Championship. Now, Kurt Angle was the European champion heading into this one. We saw at the last pay-per-view he made his debut. Or uh, not made his debut. He uh, he faced the debut of Taz. And his first recorded loss in the WWF happened at that pay-per-view as well. So this one, he's going to a match with Chris Jericho, who is the champion, uh, the Intercontinental Champion going into this match, and it was for that Intercontinental Championship. The crowd was heavy Jericho-based in this one, huge Y2J chance throughout the entire match. He was very, very over at the time. Uh, China eventually ended up as Chris Jericho's manager heading into this match and was at ringside for this match. So pretty interesting. Um, as she had her whole relationship kind of thing going on with Chris Jericho as well. Um so yeah, that's what I basically what I tried to tried to say. <laughs> oh god. Anyways, the beginning of the match was actually very very physical. There's a lot of back and forth action. You could definitely feel the intensity. It was one of those matches where you know that you're going to get excited for it and off like the first couple of minutes you know it's going to be intense. So this was this type of match. Uh most of the match was very physical, uh but the a- ending was uh but ended up being a good wrestling match actually, not the ending, but the whole match ended up being really good. Uh, throughout two guys here with incredible wrestling move sets as well so you know you're going to get a good match out of these two in Kurt Angle and Chris Jericho um, Kurt Angle thought he had the match won at one point with the angle slam but Jericho actually kicked out of the angle slam yeah he kicked out of it and it eventually led uh, to themselves going on the outside where Angle tried to hit China with the title belt but she ducked and ended up hitting Chris Jericho instead uh Oh no, uh, Jericho pushed Angle right into China. Sorry, I'm, <laughs> I got confused there for a little bit. And uh, who hit the ring step. So it's a really, really uh, physical spot here. Uh, Jericho then rolled Angle back into the ring, but he was holding on to the European title. So Angle didn't really see this. Or Jericho didn't really see this. Uh, Jericho attempted a line salt, but then gets hit with the title um, while he's doing the finishing move. So if you can imagine it, 
Angle's lying on the ground. He's holding the title, kind of keeping it hidden from Jericho. And as Jericho's doing his line salt, he landed directly onto the title because Jer- Angle was holding it out. And the referee was checking on China at the time, so that's how he was distracted. And when he finally turned around and came to it, uh, the count for the three, and Angle wins. And now he holds the both European Championship and the Intercontinental Championship at the same time. And that was a huge achievement for Kurt Angle at the time. WWE loves playing the highlights of him winning both those titles. I've seen a lot of passes. Packages with him winning that title as well. So good for Kurt Angle getting both titles at this point, man. That's a huge for his career as he just started uh, less than a year before this. So big accomplishment for Kurt Angle to be the uh, both European and Intercontinental Championship at the or champion at the same time. And it sucks for Y2J is getting cheaped out in this one. So a really good opening contest really gets you into the pay per view. I think. Uh, I think if you start off with a terrible match, you're not really gonna look forward to the rest of the pay-per-view almost. That, I mean, that's my opinion. That's how I feel. But to me, this was a really good way to start the pay-per-view. So good on them for opening with that type of match. Um, we went into the second match. We had the Dudleys versus the New Age Outlaws for the WWF Tag Team titles. New Age Outlaws were the champions going into this one. The tag team division at this point basically is like today's WWE. It mainly just focused on four teams, and that was the Dudley Boys, New Age Outlaws, uh, Edge and Christian, and the Hardys. At the beginning of this match, it was way out of control. Like, way, way, way out of control. Dudley's crashed the ring. And both teams were going at it. The crowd was getting very behind it. So the crowd was even more hyped. So when you got your crowd even more hyped, too, at the second match, you already know this pay-per-view is going to be good. And, you, and it did. And it ends off with a bang. So this was one of the good, great pay-per-views for uh, the year 2000. Um, both teams hitting their signature moves in the beginning, too. So a lot of... Uh, Signature and finishing moves being hit right in the beginning. And it ended up being a very back and forth type of match as the match went on. The New Age Outlaws used a lot of cheap tactics in order to try to win as well. They are the heels into this match. Even though both teams were kind of getting the same reaction a little bit, they are more the heels. Um, Eventually, Bubba pulled Billy Gunn out of the ring and beat him with a lead pipe. Like, just absolutely cracked him, man. War Dog gets hit into the ref. In the ring, causing him to do the old referee gets knocked down routine. You know, they, they act like they've just been shot and they're flailing around everywhere. And they just, they, they're lifeless and they don't even move. So one of those things. Um, Dudley's hit the 3D and secure the win and are your new WWF Tag Team Champions. So the ref came too after the Dudleys hit the 3D. And the Dudleys win the titles from the New Age Outlaws. So two title changes already in the first two matches of the card. And I know a lot of people criticize that too. They hate when the title too many titles change hands on a single pay-per-view. But off the bat, man, two incredible matches and two title changes that were pretty uh, shocking. I didn't think the Dudleys were actually going to walk out when I started watching this pay-per-view. So... Interesting, but good for the Dudleys to win the tag team titles here and surely holding on to them and going to WrestleMania. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, <laughs> this next match, I know my my boy Corporate Cappy, my co-host, is going to love the, the one man in this match. Uh, we got Sexual Chocolate Mark Henry. Yes, he was known as the Sexual Chocolate back then. If you guys don't know the history of Mark Henry, please go back and check it out if, if, to know what I mean. And he faced uh, Big Bad Viscera. Um, very, very physical match from these two huge superstars. Both of them are uh, kind of younger and almost in their prime. So I think they, they could put, still put up a good match with two huge guys in it. There's a lot of spots with the steel steps in this one uh, in, 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 on the outside as well. Eventually, Mae Young. And if you don't know the whole story with Mae Young and Mark Henry, please go back and see it. I'm not going to explain it. <laughs> um, this is a crazy, crazy spot here. So Mae Young eventually comes running out. And she tries to like stop Viscera from attacking Mark Henry and just gets absolutely shoved down by Viscera. And I'm like, oh, no, man, Mae Young. Mae Young has taken a lot of bumps uh, in her career, man, even at her age at this time. And she took more as the years went on, man. She's crazy. She's just a nutball, Mae Young. Um, but, yeah, uh, took a crazy bump here from Viscera. Mark Henry get, gets really angry and enraged and just absolutely demolishes Viscera. And giving him the world's strongest slam for the win. And Mark Henry, sexual chocolate, coming out on top with Viscera and helping May, poor little May Young to the back. Oh, poor May Young. <laughs> Fourth match. This is the match I was talking about in the beginning, guys, where I suggest you go back and see if you really want to see a good match. And it ends up being a tag team match. And this is for the number one contendership uh, for the WF tag team titles. And basically, the winner would go on to WrestleMania to face the tag team uh, champions, who are now the Dudleys in this case. 
this is a very interesting match, man. Both teams got a decent reaction coming out. So I'm like, okay, this is uh, interesting here. This could be another good match. Um, the other two teams are, these are, okay, sorry. I meant to say that these are the other two teams. But like I said before, they only focused on four teams mainly at that time. And these are the other two. Um, Terry Runnels was the one that escorted the Hardys to ringside. And she also hired the APA, the Alkalite Protection Agency, who was Bradshaw and Farouk or Ron Simmons to a lot of people out there for protection and who were at ringside for this match. This is a very, very, very good match. Lots of good spots by both, like I said. I loved the entire match. From start to finish, I loved it. Both teams at this point were putting up these kinds of matches like almost every match. So you know you were going to get a good match when these two were two teams were going at it. I highly suggest, again, anyone go back and watch this one. Please go back and see if you want to see a good tag team match. Um, both teams attempted to gain the advantage throughout the contest, and Edge and Christian ultimately gained it when Terry, so the one that came out with the Hardys, turned on the Hardy boys. So there's a big heel turn here, pushing Jeff Hardy off the top rope as he was trying to do the Swanton Bomb. Matt Hardy goes over to her and he's questioning her, and then Terry just slaps the absolute shit out of Matt Hardy, which leads to Christian hitting the unprettier on Matt and pinned him for the win. And your new number one contenders are Edge and Christian. Following the loss, the Hardys were actually pissed off at Terry and tried to pull her into the ring. But the APA who were at ringside, who were hired by Terry, came in and attacked the Hardys. So pretty interesting match. So you had the APA involved in this match as well, maybe to start a feud with the Hardys. Um, you had Terry Reynolds with the big heel turn, turning on the Hardys and costing them their number one contendership. And now you have your number one contenders in Edge and Christian. So it looks like at this point, the WWF tag team titles at WrestleMania is going to be the Hardys and Edge and Christian, which we'll, we'll see what happens leading up to that in the next episode. Next show or next match, we got Taz versus Big Boss Man, who was accompanied by Albert. If you guys don't know who Albert is, he is also the man who played Lord Tensai and Sweet T, and he's also the lead guy at the uh, Performance Center in NXT. Um, this was a very very quick match, basically like a job kind of match. I'm not sure why this was even a pay per view match. I thought it was horrible. Um, very, very boring as what we got from Taz from the last pay-per-view to this is really, uh, shocking. Uh, this is probably a way just Vince to bury the ECW talents that were coming over. Uh, Taz got the early advantage and in doing so, Albert jumped on the ring and it interfered to cause a DQ and then it just beat the fucking hell out of Taz. That was it. Literally the match was like four minutes long. It, like, I don't suggest you even go back and watch this one. I mean, they absolutely destroy him. Like a couple of shots with big boss man's baton, like over, Taz's head, like really, really clear cut shots. Um, eventually, referees and backstage people came out to try to stop it. Um, although this was the end of the feud as well. <laughs> um, I'm not sure what happened or why this even happened. So this was like the ending of the feuds. I, I don't know. I don't understand this. But eventually, Taz went back to ECW during its closing days and then returned to the company as a commentator on SmackDown in 2001. So we all know about Taz and his commentary with Michael Cole in the beginning when SmackDown first started. So that's basically what happened after this with Taz. Um, moving on to match number six, we had X-Pac, uh, who was accompanied by Tori, versus Kane and Paul Bearer in a no-holds-barred match. Pun intended. Yeah, buddy. Uh, the feud with Xbox and Kane is a feud that everyone is familiar with. If you don't, then uh, and you don't know about the Attitude Era, uh, Kane and Xbox had a huge feud, and it lasted for so long. It was on and off at times as well. Um, is also, if you watched in the Ruthless Aggression Era too, it kind of ended there as well. Um, in the early going of this match, it uh, it eventually led. Uh, I'm sorry, it was really physical in the early going of this match, and it eventually led to some outside in uh, outside stage area kind of spots you know where they use the barricade and they use uh, the entrance way as a uh, uh, props for this type of physical match and, and the match was very physical so there was a lot of lot of uh good hardcore spots for a no holds bar type of match like they should be using um pretty sure most of it was on the outside of the ring this match i don't remember a lot of in-ring stuff um living up to the no holds bar name uh paul bear and tori even went at it at one point i think paul bear got pushed or something <laughs> 
It was hilarious. Um, it eventually led back in the ring finally where it was a very back and forth contest for a short bit. Kane was setting up for the end when Tori tried to interfere and Kane tombstones Tori, literally. So a, a woman at this point was getting tombstone and got a wrestling move by Kane. It was crazy. I actually didn't think it was going to happen. I thought she was going to escape or X-Pac was going to save her. But no, Tori got tombstoned by Kane. It was insane. Uh, and Kane tries to hit X-Pac with the steel steps but gets drop kicked by Xbox. The Xbox. <laughs> Just call him the Xbox. X-Pac. And X-Pac pins Kane with the steps on his head. So if you can imagine Kane getting drop kicked in the knees and then the steel steps falling over his head. And then X-Pac jumps on top of the steps to hold him down and hold it over his head for the win. That's how X-Pac won this match. <laughs> so a very cheap win by X-Pac, but a very uh, opportunistic win. So good for X-Pac and uh, poor Tori who got Tombstone in this case. Not sure what really happened to her after this. Um... Next match was the seventh match on the card. It was Too Cool, which was made up of Rikishi, Grandmaster Sexe, and Scotty Tuhati. Really good entertaining team back then. Versus the Radicals, who were the guys that came over from ECW, who uh, basically out of the cruiserweight division, but were definitely like the guys who were underutilized in WCW. And that was Dean Malenko, Perry Saturn, and Chris Benoit. And they also had their uh, Chris or Eddie Guerrero at ringside, who was also part of the Radicals. And the Radicals are a very heel team at the time, drawing lots and lots of heat but very skilled in the ring at what they were doing. So if you know the Radicals, you know that they are a highly skilled team. Um, Rikishi was basically nursing a worked angle injury or ankle injury at, uh, during this feud, um, and it was from the feud with the Radicals heading into this match. The match was basically dominated by the Radicals, showing a lot of their wrestling abilities and a lot of... Uh, uh, wrestling work in and outside the ring, and you, if you can, you just see the people that are in the in the radicals. You know that this match is going to be very wrestling based. Um, Too cool. Only looked dominant when Rikishi was basically in the ring. When uh, Sex uh, um, Grandmaster Sexay and uh, Sky Too Hottie in the ring, they're just getting jawed by these guys. Is basically when Rikishi ever got tagged in, he basically helped them win. Um, it's almost like they're doing with Enzo and Cass. Like Enzo would get his ass kicked and Big Cass just come in for the save. Basically the same type of deal with these guys. Uh, Too Cool would eventually get the upper hand. And Rikishi uh, ended up pinning Dean Malenko with uh, a crazy signature move. I forget what he calls it, but it's, it's awesome. And then he hits him with the bonsai drop, even though he's feeling lots of pain and agony in that injured ankle. So Too Cool eventually wins this match, and they do their little dance. They a lot do a lot of dances after matches. If you know Too Cool, if you don't, uh, go watch it on YouTube. It's pretty neat what they do after a match. So um, Too Cool winning this match against the Radicals. This was kind of a double main evented pay per view too, because the the the, the, the co main event I guess I can call it the eighth match was the Big Show versus the Rock. And the winner is number one contender for the WWF title at WrestleMania. And then the WWF title was the main event. So I kind of counted this as a double main event, but I'm going to call this one the co-main event. Uh, just a year before this, Big Show made his debut in the WWF signing a huge 10-year contract. This match was a very physical match. Lots of outside spots. Um, well, they eventually even went up into the crowd and started fighting in the crowd with each other using the barricades, all that mumbo jumbo. And even at one point, Rock got an Irish whipped into the referee, Earl Hebner. If you guys remember Earl Hebner, he's now a TNA ref, I believe, or Impact Wrestling, whatever, GFW, whatever they want to call it. And it knocked him out. So Big Show hits the choke slam, and then another referee comes in. And if you guys know your refs, Tim White comes into the ring here and to, came out to, to count for the Big Show, but was pulled on the outside by Earl Hebner, who just got knocked out. And they start arguing and bickering at each other. Um, then Shane McMahon comes out to kind of like deal with the refs in his case, um, even though he's all he's always been against The Rock back then. Um, the Rock hits the Big Show in the head with a chair, and it even gives him a rock bomb and sets him up for the people's elbow. But as he's coming back to do the people's elbow, Shane McMahon jumps in the ring out of nowhere and just absolutely cracks The Rock over the head with a steel chair. And the Big Show gets the cover for the win thanks to Shane McMahon. So another one of those cases where Shane McMahon helps The Rock lose the match. And those guys had a huge feud back then, if you remember the Shane and Rock feud. Um, so lots of interesting things going into this. So Big Show at this point is your number one contender for WrestleMania. And uh, we'll see what happens. There's something else does happen in the weeks leading up to WrestleMania, and we'll get into that into the next episode. But heading into your main event, Triple H versus Cactus Jack McFoley in a Hell in the Cell for the WWF Championship. 
Like I said before, this is one of the greatest Hell in a Cell matches in history. Ultra physical. Like this surely goes down as to one of the most physical Hell in a Cell matches of all time. Like, damn, dude. Like, if you haven't seen this match, I highly suggest you go watch it. And if you're not a fan of gore, uh, I don't know, have your uh, blindfold ready. There's a lot of gory moments in here. Like, these guys absolutely destroyed each other. Not one person dominated the entire match. It was always down the middle. Very, very back and forth. It was awesome and crazy to see. Um, some notable spots in this was included uh, Mick Foley crashing through the table by dropping from the cell. So you know his fame is uh, thrown off the cell by The Undertaker. This was nowhere close to it, but still dropping that from that height onto a table surely uh, hurts. It's not going like, to be like dropping from uh, the cell onto a bag of pillows. You know what I mean? Um, another spot, fully smacking Triple H in the head with Barbie. Like, at, literally just, there was no give. There was no hands in the way by Triple H just right off the top of the head. And I'm like, oh, my God. For one, a two by four. And two, like, spiked barbed wire. So if you guys don't know what Barbie is, barbed wire, it, it, Barbie is either a baseball bat or a two by four wrapped in barbed wire. That's how sadistic Mick Foley Cactus Jack is. Um, another spot is where Mick Foley actually, they're on top of the, 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 the Hell in a Cell, and Foley lit Barbie on fire and actually hit Triple H with it over the head. Like, gee, like this is how physical this match was. Uh, Triple H even backflipped Cactus Jack, and he went through the cell. Backflipped and went through the cell and then laid on the map, but the mat in, it, like, it, it, it crashed in, and Mick Foley went kind of through the ring incredible spot here. I couldn't believe, like, Mick, Mick Foley's done so many crazy spots like this. I'm surprised the guy is even walking today, man. It's actually probably a miracle that Mick Foley is even walking today. Incredible, man. Triple H gets in, or gets uh, Mick Foley up for a pedigree and pins him and retains the WWF championship with a huge, huge physical win by Triple H, man. The guy, you give it up to him, too. He went through a lot of physical matches back then and even later in his career as well. Um... After this, heading into WrestleMania, the WWE title picture got very, very interesting, like I said. Something that has not been done before and would be soon to be announced in the upcoming weeks leading to WrestleMania. Um, so I will go through that in the next episode, and I'll go through the weeks heading up to uh, WrestleMania. But overall, this is a decent go-home baby, I think, going into WrestleMania. I really enjoyed it. Again, lots of good matches, lots of physical matches. Um, my favorite match out of the whole card would be the Edge and Christian and the Hardys, and I highly suggest you go back and watch this match so you know what I'm talking about. So go check that out. I love the main event, though, too. Um, a very, very physical Hell in a Cell match, probably one of the greatest ones of all time. Um, it was such an epic match, and I uh, very underrated, in my opinion, for uh, that Hound Cell, even for the Hardys and Edge and Christian for that point. So, really good pay-per-view. I really enjoyed it. Next episode, we have arrived at the Showcase of the Immortals, and that is WrestleMania 2000. So, I can't wait for that. Thanks for listening, guys, and taking your time to listen to Blast from the Past episode. I got an idea, which I'm going to bring up in the next episode. I'm kind of still working out the details, so stay tuned. There's going to be some slight changes to Blast from the Past. Um, and then, uh, yeah, I'll go through that in the next episode. Other than that, guys, that's going to wrap it up for Blast from the Past episode 2, No Way Out 2000 on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, the podcast where I go through or go into the past of the Dirty B and give you a pay-per-view by pay-per-view reaction and review. You can follow the podcast on Twitter, no, uh, Insta- or Instagram, and Facebook by searching up No Holds Barred WPs and go give us a follow. You can also check out our weekly show where we talk about Raw and SmackDown, react and discuss to it, the Lowdown Show. That is also available everywhere. We are available on Spreaker, YouTube, iTunes, and Stitcher Radio. Go check us out on YouTube. Give us a subscribe, youtube.com slash NHBWR, and also on Spreaker, spreaker.com slash NHBWP. I am your host as always, ladies and gentlemen, your co-host, the self-proclaimed greatest co-host, Kyle Masters. I'll see you next time. <laughs>